we are eating? Milton, raw dried meat. Hey. I also want to try the raw meat. Mm. Mm. So will you be having this as your normal diet? I'll try it at home. <laughs> uh, don't try this at home. I have eaten many interesting things in my life. Raw meat has never crossed my mind. But hey, here we are. Raw meat. This is called Sehua Park. Okay, I will bring you the lowdown on the raw meat story later. Let us clear with a few things I should have already told you earlier, right? Your money confuses me. <laughs> the pula is the currency of Botswana. It currently ranks as the fifth strongest currency in Africa. On average, one dollar is equivalent to 11.6 pulas. One Botswana pula is equivalent to an average of 10 Kenyan shillings. How about greetings? Dumela means hello to a single person. Dumelang is hello to a group of people. The answer is simple. Ma means madam and Ra means sir. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Well, with that done, let us now head to Hansi district. We will be visiting Hansi town, which is about 280 kilometers from Kang and later Dika on the town's outskirts. Hansi lies north of Kalagadi and Quineng districts and shares its western border with Namibia. What a scenic journey to Hansi. It gets even more interesting as you arrive in Hansi town. Hansi is the cattle capital. The farms here are humongous. In fact, according to Botswana Meat Commission, Hansi contributes over 75% of all beef exports. Okay, maybe this is a good time to revisit that raw meat story, right? After an exhausting day of shoots in Dika, it was time to sample this much talked about delicacy. <laughs> so, a bit of contention as to whether this is really raw meat. So Chanana calls a friend and here's how it goes. Just add some sahuapa, some biltong. So how do you prepare it? The only thing that you need to do is get vinegar and mix spices. Don't use salt because spices have salt themselves, I guess. Uh -huh. And then you dip the meat. It's either you slice it or you just put whatever way you want it to be. Whether you want it to be a bigger piece or strip. You put uh, the meat and soak it into the, the marinade for an hour or two. Mm -hmm. And then if you have somewhere to hang the meat, you can hang the meat. It can dry, air dry, or you can use uh, a to help you out. But don't put it in, uh, under direct sunlight. Well, need I say more? And the verdict from my colleague Calvin's. Even sweeter than cooked meat. Mm. So will you be having this as your normal diet? I'll try it at home. <laughs> Case closed. Lovely language, right? The Bushman or sand language. Lovely clicking sounds that send you back to the film The Gods Must Be Crazy. What is it with the striped outfits? Well, this is historical. These are mining outfits that for one reason or another have become normal wear. The stripes are actually reflective. This is to ensure miners see each other clearly within the mines. Okay, here's the thing. It's day two in Hanzi and our assignment in Botswana is coming to a close. It is freezing here. 
It is 5 a.m. and we need to get back to Haburon, 680 kilometers away, before 1 p.m. to be able to do our COVID-19 tests in preparation for travel back home. After a long drive. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> we are on time, man. No time wasting here. Quickly, we dash in for our tests. Now remember my promise at the beginning of this series? Yep, today we take you around Khabarom. This is Independence Street. Quite an affluent neighborhood here, right? Despite being the home to Botswana Communications Regulatory Authority, it is also home to Botswana Red Cross Society headquarters. We are here to pay homage. And that is not all. The street also hosts the Uganda Consulate. Hey, let's wrap this up in style, shall we? This is arguably the most iconic monument in Haborong. By the way, the word Degosi means chief, and the story goes. Three Degosi, Kama III of Banguato, Sebele I, the Bakwena, and Batoen I of the Bangakwese are credited with securing the state that is now Botswana in 1885. At the time, Botswana, then the Bushina Land Protectorate, was in danger of being incorporated in the exploitative British South Africa Company, and the tribal leaders set out to do something about it. The result is that the territory was put directly under the crown, hence safeguarding it. This single act saved present-day Botswana from being part of the South African apartheid. What else is there to see in this city? Parliament buildings, various key government offices, the main bus stop. Lastly, we get to Jarateng restaurant for a well-deserved meal. Last supper, you may add. It is a wrap for this series, guys. Time to get back home.